Yeah, g'day viewers. Um, there's been a lot of people who have commented on the birds making a noise. Uh, this is where I'm working. I've only got a tiny backyard and that's where the birds are. There's nothing I can do about it. We used to have a lot more yard over here but it's been taken away. So I'm really, really sorry if the birds make too much noise. The only thing I can do is be mindful of it and try not to talk while they're making a racket. If I am talking and they start, I'll pause and repeat what I was saying when it's quiet. That's the best I can do. We are hoping to move house in the future, not too distant future, hopefully, and I'll have somewhere better sorted. But right now, I am deeply, deeply sorry. If you, if you find it hard to understand what I'm saying, I'll do the best I can to talk when it's quiet. So um, I hope that that's okay with you guys. Howdy viewers, Prospector Pete here. So the video that I'm doing this time is removing gold from circuit boards using nitric acid or nitric acid. Uh, I've shown you how to do this with uh, AP, but a viewer request wanted to know a better way. And I don't know how you define better if you think cheaper then AP. If you think easier and faster, then definitely nitric acid. It's the way I do it because I can't be bothered waiting two weeks for AP to work. Um, but there are some people who don't want to use nitric acid, so AP is their choice. It's uh, up to the individual. So each of these boards have got gold on them somewhere. Most of these boards are from... Uh, TVs, flat screens, and I've taken the fingers off because they get processed differently. Um, you can see there's bits of gold on these. Some have got little bits, some have got a lot. Um, some of these boards have quite a bit, and some of them are from mobile phones. Uh, kind of mobile phone one. Oh, here's a a normal landline phone board. This board seems to have a nice amount on it. Some have only got little bits. And this has got some on there, some on the front. It's a bit of hit and miss what's in here. This is, uh, I believe, some sort of, or it might be a calculator or something. One here is a remote control, a TV remote or a video remote or something. Um, there, there, are, there are cell phone boards in here, I just can't locate one right now. This has got a nice amount of gold on it. Some have got little bits. Um, that's just got a bit of, it's a processor, but it's all flat on there. And... Uh, so there's a bit of everything in here. Uh, this is a cell phone board. It's a nice amount of gold on that one. And there's also the boards that I uh, processed in the last video where I took the mask off and revealed the fully gold-plated boards. They're also going to go in this. There's another cell phone board. There's another cell phone board. The older phones are the better ones for this. The newer ones don't have much. But this is stuff from everywhere and anywhere. There's no one particular source that this came from. It's a bit of everything. Um, we could try and weigh it up, but it's, I've still got the other stuff to go with it yet. And that's I'm still actually making that video. I'm making two videos at once. Um, so the next step now is to go and put all this in hydrochloric acid because as you can see there's a lot of solder on these boards like that and I want to get all the solder 
and some even though I've done this over with a heat gun there's still going to be some MLCCs and other bits and pieces that I don't want in this solution so these are all going to be soaked in hydrochloric acid uh, the boards from the previous video where I took the mask off, they're still soaking in, in the hydrochloric acid, so I'm going to go and take those out now and put these in. Make the most of the acid while it's there. Uh, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I use my acids until they're no good. I don't waste a drop. So, you know, the, the acids are expensive, and it's hard enough to make a profit from this hobby. I'm fortunate enough to get all my TVs and videos and computers and everything for free, but I also try and still save on acid because it's expensive and I use it until it's depleted. So I'll go out and take all the other boards out and put this in. Okay, because of the amount of boards I have, I'm going to need to do this in at least two batches. I have what I think is half of that amount in there at the moment. It's fairly crowded and I want to make sure that acid can get to them all. I will be going in there occasionally and stirring it, moving the pieces around, turning them over, making sure they've all got the acid. But if I was to fill this to the top, it would be too much harder to do that. At the moment, it's going to be easier to move things around and make sure they're all getting it. So I'm going to do that batch first. Uh... What I do is I um, put them on heat. You don't need to put them on heat for hydrochloric acid, but it does, it, all acids work better with heat. So I put it on for about an hour. It's only on a medium heat. You don't have to boil it by any means. You just want to heat the acid up. It'll take all the solder off. And then I'll rinse those off and then put this lot in. And if it doesn't go into two batches, I'll do three. I, uh, I've just put a second load on and I'm going to need to do the last bit later on because it's too much. Uh, I've rinsed these off. i put the ones that went in here. I've rinsed them six times because I want to make sure every single bit of HCL is gone. Otherwise, when we put nitric in, it'll form acroridia and dissolve the gold and I won't know it because I'll be pouring the nitric off. So we'll lose gold. So you've got to thoroughly make sure that every single bit of HCL is gone. I spread the boards apart like this and hosed them individually to make sure that I get it all out. Well, the last of the boards are in the HCL now. Um, so another hour or so and then they can come out. And what you might notice after putting boards with gold in them into HCL is that the gold may appear to have gone, disappeared, or gone a funny colour. It doesn't always happen, but occasionally it looks like it's disappeared or it's gone a dark, like this one here. You see that colour there? If that happens, don't panic. It hasn't gone. If you when you when you put that into the nitric acid, or nitric acid, you'll see that it's just as bright as it ever was. But what sometimes happens is it tarnishes, it seems to tarnish with the HCL. See, they look a bit funny, but they'll come straight back to where they were once they're in the nitric acid. Um, it's just an optical illusion, there's not actually anything wrong with it. So, some of them look like they're okay, and some of them seem like they're going a weird colour. But it doesn't matter, there's nothing wrong with it, it'll be just the same. So, you know, some people have panicked and said, oh, what have I done to the gold? You haven't done anything to the gold, it's perfectly fine. Okay, so now I'll just wait for this last batch to go, and then I can take them out and get ready for nitric acid. Alright, so all the, all the boards have been soaked in hydrochloric acid. Um, they've all been rinsed off, and... They're ready for the nitric acid, nitric acid, but I'll do that later because I've still got those other boards to do. So in here, I've got water and sodium hydroxide, drain cleaner, otherwise known as caustic soda or lye. 
I don't know the exact quantity that you've got to put in. It doesn't really matter, I suppose. I've just poured half this container in, and this is a 500 gram container. Probably too much, but I've got plenty of it, so it doesn't matter. So you've got to be careful with the stuff. Always wear gloves. Um, and I suppose if there's a risk of it splashing up at your face, you should have um, glasses, safety glasses or a visor. Um, I'm pretty careful with it. I don't like splashing it on my clothes and then wearing holes in my clothes. So I'm not going to be splashing it around. But I'm still putting gloves on because, as the name suggests, caustic soda. You know, it's, it's not some good stuff to play with. It's uh, quite nasty. Let's make sure the gloves are all the way up. There's no holes. I've just used this one and there's no holes in it. Um, I do have it heating up at the moment. Uh, just a medium heat. Doesn't need to be very hot. So while it's heating up, I'll do this. And... Uh, it takes longer when it's cold. If you don't have a heat source, I guess you can still do this, but it will take a lot longer. Uh, they start getting stripped quite easily when they're warmed up. So I'm not gonna overfill the pan. I'm just gonna lay them in and make sure there's a space between them all. And because of my back, I'll be sitting down doing this and just taking my time. That'll do for now. I'll let those work. I've only got this pile to do. So what I've got is a toothbrush, an old toothbrush. Uh, just pick it up. Gently even push it under the water and scrub it. Turn it around, make sure it's all clean. So when uh, I'll give it a chance to eat some of it off, and I'll come back to you. Okay, so I'm going to start putting these in acid. Um, it doesn't matter that this beak is dirty because I'm not going to process gold, uh, purify gold in it at the moment. I'm just going to strip the boards. Um, so I want to start with all these nice gold ones. I ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mouse pad. Gold, gold plated mouse pads and two larger boards I like to see the big gold foils come off that's why I want to do these first I'll do all the other stuff later so what I'm going to do now is just put some water in here it doesn't even need to be distilled it can be just tap water because there's no silver and then I'll put them on heat and put some nitric acid in there Hopefully we should see some nice big gold foils come off. Okay, I got the water's in there. And pour some nitric in there. A fair bit because I've got a lot of boards to do. And put the heat on and give it a chance to do its magic. So what's actually happening is underneath that gold plating is a copper base and you can see it starting to show through the gold plating on these big boards is obviously very very thin but the gold plating on the mouse pads is a lot thicker and you can already see the copper showing through on this but not on these and there's a different color so what's going to happen is the uh, nitric nitric acid will consume the copper it'll get underneath the gold and consume the copper then the gold will fall off and flake. And that's what we want to do. We want to release all the cop all, all the gold from all the boards by consuming the copper that's underneath them. And when I'm when I think that the board is clear of all the gold, I'll pull them out one at a time and have a look, maybe spray it down with a water spray if I need to. And I've got a dish over here to put them in and rinse them off. I'll put some water in there and rinse them off. And then they can go in the rubbish because there'll be nothing left of them. All the gold should stay in the in the beaker here. And you can see it's starting to go blue, a greeny bluey colour. That's because of the copper being consumed. 
Now when I start seeing some flakes moving around, I'll show you. So at, the, at the moment it's just, like I said, this, this plating is very thin, but I don't see any flakes just yet. And you can see some of the lighter gold coating floating on the surface. So uh, it's very, very thin on those big boards. And it won't be long before these ones start to peel. Well, I don't see any large flakes of gold, but I do see lots and lots of little ones. So it's starting to peel off. Yeah. So there's lots of gold on the surface. Heaps of it all on top there. It's all staring up. Those boards there, those big boards, I think they're almost depleted of gold. Looks like it's all mostly off. And I'll let it go a bit longer. It's uh, almost night time here, so I might just, uh, about half an hour or so, turn it off and let it sit overnight. It'll just keep working its magic overnight. And then tomorrow I'll pull out those big boards, check them, make sure there's no gold on them. There are a mountain of boards there to put in. Uh, I see lots of gold moving around. Don't know if it's showing up on the camera or not. Okay, so this has been soaking for two days. And the only way to find out if it's all done and if those boards are ready to throw away is to pull them out and have a look. And it's a deep beaker. Uh, so I've got two choices. Either put my hand in there and start pulling them out, or what I'm thinking of doing is uh, filtering it. And I can keep using the same solution, but without all the gold in it. Because, you know, as you, as you lift these up and take them out, when the gold's floating around inside, it gets on the boards, and you don't know if it's still stuck on the board until you squirt it. And It'd be so much easier if I could just uh, filter it. And the other thing is too, when I pull the boards out and go to um, spray it off up here, there's a chance of losing the gold. It could spray off into the distance. If the beak is empty, I can put it down in the beaker and spray it in there and keep all the gold that way. So everything's telling me that I should filter it, which is what I would normally do. I'm just explaining to you guys. So, I've got a nice clean beaker set up. I'm just going to put a funnel and filter on it. And I'll filter all the solution. And you should see a nice pile of gold in the filter. And I'll hold on to that filter and keep doing that with all the boards. So each time I get a pile of boards in there, because they're small, and only this one that reaches up at the top here, but the rest of them are all small. So it's going to be so much easier to filter it every time. Also, I'll then be able to find out if the solution's still strong enough or if the gold's not being removed, which means I would need more nitric acid. So, this beaker is a lot bigger than the one I've got there. I may need to put this into two beakers, which wouldn't be a bad thing because I could have two going at once and get through the boards a lot faster. Alrighty, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start filtering the solution. So I just cleaned another beaker and I don't know if you can tell but it's got some brown rust stains from a previous solution. And that's not a problem because the nitric, sorry, nitric acid will remove that. So I'm going to set that up as well with a funnel. I'm getting down in the solution, it's come a fair bit. So I'm not going to fill the, the beakers very much because I want to be able to add more nitric as time goes on. Plus, when I'm squirting the boards off, obviously they're adding water to the solution. So I need room in these beakers to allow for more liquid you know, spraying off and all that. So I'll probably 
fill it to about here, just over halfway. And most of the boards are small anyway. So I'll get this one set up. Okay, so I've taken all the boards out, squirted them all off, and you can see the gold in there, there's tons of it. It's just packed. This is the bottom down here, all packed with gold. And the filters are both chock a block full of gold, and they're taking ages to filter through. That's probably at the height I wanted it to be, but I've still got this to go through yet. And this is watered down a lot because I squirted all the boards off. So I might not add this liquid to that because they're nice and concentrated as you can see. So I've got some silver solution that could use some more free nitric and I'll put all this into that after I filtered it of course I'll get all the gold out. You still see some pieces on the glass I've got to squirt that down see all the gold there. So uh, I've got to keep squirting this and getting it all off and filtering it and so on. What I might do is once that's run through, those two there, um, I'll just put those beakers aside, start a third beaker. I may even start a new one now because those filters are so blocked up. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I'll get another, another beaker and filter all this into it. And I'm going to have so far three filters, chocolate block full of gold. It doesn't really matter. They can all go in the AR at the end. So that's what I'm up to, so I'll show you that, uh, okay, so all the gold was off the boards, some of it had to be squirted off, but it all came off. However, there was some copper still on one of the boards that wasn't consumed, so that tells me that all the nitric has been used up. So in these two, I'm going to have to add some more when I put the boards in. Uh, so I'll show you more when there's more to show. I forgot to show you, this is uh, one of the mouse pads completely stripped of all the gold and the copper because these are in there the longest so that's how good they look when they're finished and throw that in the bin with the rest of it and this is blocking up very fast you see there's a lot of gold in there that's a lot so yeah, this filter's blocking up as well but um, I'll just let it take its time and go down. I've drawn some holes in the end of the, the funnel all the way around there just to help let it out faster. It does work. Um, I only do it to the one bit, but I, I don't need it very often, so I've only done it to one funnel. You can see the gold floating in there. And uh, it'll be a lot when I'm finished, hopefully. So I just want to show you that mouse pad, and I forgot to do that before. Well, I'll let this drain. This is the uh, third batch, and I've finally gotten through all the boards. I put most of the long ones in this beaker because it's taller than this one, and I've got the shorter ones in here. Uh, this solution was completely filtered, and now there's already gold starting to come off. You can see here where it's starting to peel off in a nice sheet and the rest of the solution is down the end there filtering i can't show you because my phone's on charge here where i'm sitting and once it's filtered the loose solution will go back into here so i'm not using extra fluid i'm using the same fluid just getting the gold out uh, my gold filters see if i can reach through without knocking anything i put all my filters in here and I could use the same filter over and over, but I've got a bad batch of filters, and I'm keen to use them all up. Um, they're all chocolate block full of gold. Plus, it would take longer as, uh, if I use these because they're so choked up full of gold. Um, I want to do it a bit faster than that. I don't want to sit all day waiting for it to filter. So, um, this, yeah, as I said, the last batch now and you see gold moving around already it's already starting to move around 
Now, some people may say that this is an expensive way of doing it. It's probably the most expensive way, but nevertheless, still not all that costly. I think uh, all up I've used no more than 50 mils of nitric, or nitric. Um, when you compare it to AP, yeah, it's definitely more expensive. AP is cheap as, but AP takes weeks and weeks and weeks, and this doesn't. This takes days instead of weeks. So if you work out, I don't, I'm not that good at maths, but it cost me, uh, let me see, about $60, $69 or something for a 20-litre drum of it. And I've only used about 15 or 50 mils, I mean, 50 mils. So... I don't know what that would work out to. Uh, wouldn't be much, I wouldn't imagine. And we'll see what I get for the gold at the end of it. As a, you know, compared, the gold price is right up at the moment. Um, eighteen hundred over eighteen hundred US, which is around two thousand four hundred, two thousand eight hundred something Australian. So I think I'll be in front. Um, but this is how I normally do it. I just put things in a container um, and put nitric acid in there with dissolved, uh, with distilled water. And uh, yeah, I, I seem to be doing all right. So uh, you just can make up your own mind, which is better for you. Uh, obviously, some people expense is a problem, and also so is getting hold of nitric. So for those people with an AP, yeah, would be the way to go. If you don't have any problems getting hold of it, and if you don't consider it to be too expensive, then and you want to do it in days instead of weeks, then, then this will be the better way. So, um, we'll see what happens when this is all finished and how much we get. Uh, I've got two filters down there at the moment. Um, they're pretty choked up. Now, I'll see if I can get the phone off the charger. So, this one here is a fresh filter and there's still a lot of gold in there this one here is choked up all the black stuff is just bits of dark circuit board like there was some black boards and some brown boards you see what I mean about a bad filter batch a lot of the gold was escaping through the filters I don't know if you can see it well but there's gold in there that's passed through the filter because they have holes at the bottom of them it's where they join them together it's crap they're no good so that's why I'm keen to use them up so uh, I'm just pouring this through this solution down here will go back into this pot the speaker sorry and fill the speaker up so uh, I'll get back to you when this is finished because this is uh, yeah, not too far off being done now, probably another day or two. Alright, so this is the last of the batch now, these two here. I've uh, got to filter it and squirt off the boards, get the gold off into a filter and then we can finally process those filters along with those ones and see what we got from all these boards. I started with the bigger beaker and I poured the solution into these two funnels so that when this beaker is empty I could then use this beaker to squirt off the boards. I was able to hold the boards down in the beaker and squirt them so that any gold comes off I don't lose it. So that's just the squirted off water now with the gold in the bottom. Now I've got to do this, this beaker here and I can use this beaker to squirt those boards off. There's actually a couple of things that I wanted to achieve from showing you this method. One of them, most importantly, is to show you that you need a lot of computer scrap, and I mean a lot of computer scrap, to make a decent amount of gold. I recently had someone who processed, I think it was a kilo of uh, PCU backs and then wondered why they had a small dusting of gold on the bottom. They wanted to get rich overnight. That's not going to happen, okay? 
I'm just keeping it real. You will not make a million dollars at this overnight. I have so many computers and laptops and desktops and uh, screens and you name it given to me every day. I get so much of it coming through. It takes me a, oh, so long to process it all to get it down to the point where it's worth bringing outside and putting an asset. I've got to strip it all down and put each thing into the tubs and it takes forever. And then when you process it, you've got a little bit of time and it just takes so much. So don't think you're gonna make it rich overnight. Secondly was to show you that there is a better way or a faster way if you like than using AP. But yes, it might cost a bit more. And also to let you know that you're gonna go through quite a few filters doing it this way, as I guess you still do with AP. Uh, however, the filters cost me like, I think $5 or something from wish.com. And if I can only get a gram of gold, that's $80 Australian, so I'm still in front. Apart from the cost of the nitric, which wouldn't have been much, like I said, I've only used about 50 mils. I don't know if you worked that out to what that comes to, but so anyway, I'll show you my filters now. They're already blocking up. They're taking quite a long time to go down. If you're in some sort of hurry, you could replace the filters with a new one. But I'm not in that much of a hurry and I've only got that little bit to go. You can see, or I can see in the light, probably doesn't show up on the camera, but there's gold all around the edges of this filter. Uh, a minute ago I could see it, it's just not seem to come through on the camera. But uh, there's a fair bit down the bottom there. Or a little bit anyway. So I've only got this more to go. Now, when I do solutions for myself that aren't on camera, I don't do it this way. When people like me make a video, they do a video of one type of thing, just to simplify things, because we know how hard it is to get started and learn. And if we did a multitude of things all at the same time, it would be too confusing. So, in reality, I don't do just boards, or just this, or just that. I do a, a whole pile of stuff together. I'll give you an example. This is a batch I'm doing for myself. It's got AR in there, and it's all kinds of muck in there. This is the second process. This is the first process. This is what I'm doing now for you guys. But I've got all kinds of things in there. It's just a nitric bath with everything that I can think of. Boards, pins, you name it. It's got gold in it. It goes in there. The only thing I don't put in there is IC chips and BGA chips. There's all sorts of stuff in there. And I let it sit and work. And then once all the gold is stripped off, just like I'm doing now with these, I filter it and I put it into AR. That's the AR there. This is the nitric bath. But it would be way too confusing for you guys. So I just do one thing at a time. So just boards or just pins or whatever. Uh, because it takes so much stuff to make a decent amount of gold, that's why I put everything into one batch. And that batch there hasn't even finished it. I'm not even at the top. I'll keep adding stuff to it and then topping it up with solution and add some more to it and put more solution until I get to the top and then once it's had its chance to work and everything's dissolved and filtered then that filter goes in the AR and that AR must have oh, six or seven filters in it by now and I mean chock-a-block gold filters not you know a little bit in there um, probably four or five of these solutions worth of gold in each filter have gone into the AR so far. And then I'll keep doing it, there's no rush for me. So I'll put probably another four or five of these solutions here into the AR. And then I might get 10 grams or a bit more. But on its own, one treatment like that, be lucky to get a gram, two grams at best. Which is, yeah, it's $160 Australian, but I don't want to do two grams at a time. I want to do 10 or 20 grams at a time. So uh, I'm not in a hurry for it. If the time comes, I need some cash. Then I'll quickly process the AR and see what I can get. Right now, at this point in time, for another week or so, I'm okay. 
and I'll get the little bit of gold that I get from this video so that'll tie me over so I've got these last few boards to squirt off there's a few on the bottom there and a few standing up I've already squirted off quite a lot my bin's full, I'm almost full I'm just waiting for that to filter and then once all this is done those filters will go in with that jar the, the other beaker down there, the little beaker full of filters and we'll be able to process it and see what we get um, the amount of boards that I've done in this video would probably match up to the amount of boards that I would process in this but this has also had pins in there and plugs and all kinds of stuff it doesn't matter about the plastic it doesn't matter about the cardboard or the boards or any of that rubbish because that all gets filtered out even though it's in the solution and even though it's in the AR it doesn't matter because when the AR is treated and all the gold's dissolved I filter it and I squirt off all the boards and plastic and plugs and whatever else is in there to get the gold solution out and get the gold filtered into a nice container nice and clear so you don't have to worry people say oh but what about this and that the plugs and the boards don't worry about it I'm I'm squirting off the boards for this process because why not but in that mix over there it would be too hard with all the pins and plugs and stuff in there so I just leave it all together I do try and simplify things where I can so this is a lot easier what I'm doing for this video easier for you guys to learn and easier for me to manage so I just wanted to clarify that that you're not going to make a million overnight please don't think you'll get a lot from scrap at any one time uh, it may look like a lot you see boards with gold all over them and plugs and pins with gold all over them it looks like a lot but you're going to remember it's micro plating unless they're real hardcore bloody military plugs or something you're not going to get much gold at any one time unless you process a lot of stuff now there are some people I know that have got kilos and kilos of things stored they've been storing for a while before they learnt well if you processed a kilo of stuff or a couple of kilos yeah you're going to get a little bit but this sort of process what I'm doing just for you guys I don't think it's going to yield a lot I'll be like I, I, I estimate probably two grams at best I'll be lucky if there's more I'll be surprised but uh, yeah I'm guessing around up to two grams probably lucky to get two grams well, we'll see. I could be wrong. Okay, so now that all the uh, filters are finished, finished filtering everything, it's time to put some acaridia and dissolve that gold. So I'm going to add hydrochloric acid, just enough to cover everything. You don't need a whole lot, and that's plenty, because the filters will break down into a pulp. So if anything, I probably didn't need to put that much, but that's all right. And then with the uh, nitric, I'm only going to add a pi half a pipette full. That's it. And then if I need more, I'll do it drop by drop because there's not a lot of gold in there. So I'm going to put this on a sort of lowish to medium heat, probably two, three, something like that. And I'll put a lid on it. And I'll keep an eye on it and just see. If I need any more when there's no more reaction that's why I want the lid so I can see all the fumes in here when the fumes stop I'll put a couple of drops that's all if you put too much nitric in there you'll never be able to get the gold out because there'll be too much gold too, too much nitric it won't drop so I'll just keep an eye on it it's been on the heat now for three or four hours I had other things to do and uh there's no fumes in there so I'm going to take the lid off and put a couple of drops you can see it's just going to be literally a few drops, that's it because uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of gold in there so I'm just going to see if that creates any more fumes see that on the, on the plate this is where I had the lid. What I should have done is cleaned it off into there. So that's obviously gold solution. I'm going to squirt that down into there. I need two hands for that. So after putting a few drops in, 
Well, it's early days yet because I've only just done it, but I haven't seen any more reaction. A lot of condensation on the beaker, so it's making it hard for you to see. Uh, I might give it a stir. Mix it all up a bit because uh, the nitric I just put in there might not have made it to the acid. It looks like all the paper pulp is on top. So I'll give it a stir and see if that helps. Okay, I'll stir it up. If there was going to be any more reaction, it should be by now. Uh, it's highly likely that I had more than enough to start with because, like I said, I don't expect to be much gold there. Half a pipette might have been too much. I'm not used to doing small batches, so I probably overshot the mark. Um, with no more reaction, I'd say I'm definitely over not over nitric or over nitric or however you want to call it. Uh, it's getting late now outside, so I'm just going to turn it off. And if there is any gold left in there, that extra little bit of nitric I just did will work. Uh, tomorrow I'll filter it and denox it. I don't want to denox it while there's all that paper pulp in there. Um, I'll filter it first and denox it. And then drop the gold tomorrow. Okay, so I'm going to filter this. Um, I've got two types of filters. I've got these cheap and nasty coffee ones which I don't like, they're not a very good brand and then I've got some good uh, lab filters this will be good for making sure that it's a really clear solution afterwards but I don't want to do that right now because first off I just want to get all the pulp out all the filter papers that were that were, would have gone into a pulp into here so what I'm going to do first is just filter it with a cheap ass coffee filter because they're not very good these ones, this is a bad batch I bought just to get all this pulp out of there and then when I've only got liquid solution I run it through a lab filter to get it nice and clear so I'll just get the paper ready, I need two hands for that Right, so the filter paper is ready and I'll just pour this in I see all the stuff in there well, that's what I'm trying to catch all that and as it's going through I'm looking for any gold flakes to make sure I've got it all I can't see any so far if I see any specks at all then I'll know that I need some more nitric acid but I doubt it very much because there was no more reaction when I was putting more in See all this pulp? I want to catch all that. So I'll let that filter for now. Get this to come back into the beaker. I'll squirt that in in a minute. I'll let that drain through. Catch all this rubbish. It's just coming through as a nice clear solution, but it's not going to be perfect yet until I go through the lab filter. So there's a bit of residue as you can see in the paper and I'm thinking if I go pouring that in getting more into there it's going to be too hard to actually get this residue clean. I need to make sure that I've got all the gold solution out and if I pour a whole pile of residue on top of that it might not actually thoroughly clean. So I'm going to use my rinse bottle here and just rinse this down making sure that all the gold solution comes out of that particular bit of residue before I go pouring more in so when I rinse that I know because that's going to be all sitting on top of this and I want to make sure that that all gets clean but everything below it and it might not thoroughly clean if I don't rinse it now so that's just Probably that wasn't necessary, but I just think by rinsing this now, it'll definitely get that part clean before I go putting more on top. I've poured the last of it in, and it's settled, and I've just gone and got my water bottle here and just rinsed out all the paper. 
to make sure that all the gold solution is out of the paper and now I'm just going to let that settle and go through so then tomorrow I can filter through the lab filter and uh, get all, all the sediment out and, so we can drop the gold now I'm about to continue on with this and put the that filter in my paper storage because even though I've rinsed it and pretty sure I've got most of the gold solution out there would still be some so that'll go in paper storage and then I need to treat that however there's something I must do first in one of my videos about transistors and I use these bowls want to weigh it up and I said I had something like 6.5 grams or whatever it was, 6 something. That was wrong and I apologise. The last thing I ever want to do on my videos is have untruths. This is the gold powder that I got as well as what settled in the, in the uh, flask. So I'm about to refine it all. Now, when I weighed it up, I had the gold dust in one and I weighed an empty one to tear it but on closer inspection look at the thickness of this one compared to this one a viewer pointed out to me that that seemed like a lot of gold could I re-weigh it and that's when I noticed looking at these two there's a very big difference I've tried squirting this gold out but it seems to want to bond to the ceramic the only way I'm going to get that out is with a bit of acarugia. So when I'm refining this, I'll put some of the acarugia in here. So, I want to officially apologise for having a wrong amount. I wish there was some way that I could edit it, but there's not. So I make a formal statement here on, on this video. The weight was totally wrong. I re-weighed the powder as best I could. You can see some stuck in both of them and it came up to about two grams or something but i'm going to refine it all and get it all together because quite a lot of it settled in the filter in the flask and uh it needed refining anyway so i just want to apologize and now i'll carry on with the, with the other job okay now that that's been said we carry on with this uh, I do need to filter it through a lab filter but since most of the sediment is out before I drop the gold I want to de denox it because I did put that little bit extra in to see if there was a reaction and there wasn't so uh, now would be a good time to filter it because then I would be able to filter it with all the denox the extra sulfamic in there and end up with a really clear solution that I can drop the gold. So I'm going to put the heat on because you need to have it hot with sulfamic acid. I'm going to put it on about halfway because this goes up to five. So I'll put it just over three. Let it get hot and then I'll put some sulfamic acid in. Okay, it's plenty hot enough now. Um, it was hot enough earlier, but the birds were making a noise. So now I'm going to turn this off and put some sulfamic acid in there. All right, so I'll put a little bit in. You see the reaction? For anybody who's new to this and doesn't know how to do this, you wait until you, wait until you see the reaction stop. Then you keep putting some in and you don't get the same reaction. There's some on the bottom. I'll give that a stir. And just keep putting it in. See now there's no reaction, a tiny bit of reaction. I'm getting close. I'm gonna put one more bit in. 
give it a stir. So that little bit of reaction, that's okay. We'll see how we go with this. The idea is here, I want to have excess self-amic. I want to have excess self in there. If there's self in there that hasn't hasn't dissolved, then I know that there's definitely no free nitric in there. So now I'll let that cool off. i wait probably an hour or two and see if all that is dissolved or not. If it has, I'll put more in. If it hasn't, then I know I can stop. It's cooled down quite a bit now and as you can see, there's some tiny, tiny bit of self at the bottom. That's what you want. You don't want too much. You want to waste it. Just a little bit to say that there's no more excess nitric in there. Now, I've got the filter ready. And I'm going to filter this through into a clean... I've got a clean beaker. We get a nice, clear solution. Luckily, unfortunately, these are small filters. I'd like to have much bigger ones, but it is what it is. So I'm going to have to do this slowly. It's a nice clean beaker. It's got um, condensation on there, but it is clean. I went and washed it. It's important to have a clean beaker because you don't want to introduce any contaminants into the gold solution. So I'll continue filtering this and come back for the next step. See these lab filters are a lot finer than a coffee filter. They take a lot longer but they get every bit of sediment. If you look down here it's coming out nice and clear, which is what I want. Now before you do any gold drop, you should always test. Even though I know there's gold in there, there's a lot of people that think they know there's gold in their solution, but there's not. They test it, no, they, they don't test, they just go and try and drop the gold and then wonder why it's not there. Always, always, always do a gold test. And it has an added feature, an added uh, benefit by doing a gold test because it'll give you an indication of how strong the solution is, how rich it is, how much gold's in there. If you get a very weak gold test, then it's highly likely you don't have a whole lot of gold. If you get an instant dark black re uh, response, then that's an indication that you've got a nice bit of gold in there. So, <clears throat> over here, I've got my gold test plate. You get a nice clean section, this one's pretty clean, and you put your gold solution in. Then you get your stannous chloride, and if you've seen one of my recent videos, you'll know that this is all fresh. But when I say fresh, it's freshly put into this bottle. It's actually over two years old, closer to three years old. Anyone that tells you stannous chloride has a shelf life, I'm talking snot. All right, so we'll do a test. And as I expected, there's not a lot of gold in there. It'll change, but it's going to change very, very slowly. I'll come back to it in a few minutes. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's just starting to get a dark ring around the edges. It's going to take a while to go dark. This is a classic example of why you need to do a gold test. It's also a classic example of why you need so much computer waste to get gold. People would have thought from all those boards that I had that there'd be a lot of gold. Nah. Nah. We're talking micro thickness. This stuff is so, so thin. You really, really do need a lot of gold before you get anywhere. Now, there's a third option, the third possibility of why it's such a weak test, and why it's taking so long to go dark, is the solution could be too diluted. Now, quite often when you've got a very, very diluted solution, you'll end up with a weak test. And if you evaporate some of it off, down under half, maybe even a quarter, down to a quarter of what it is, and test it, and if there's gold in there, 
you'll get a much stronger reaction. So these are things for you guys who are playing at home to, uh, to learn. If you don't get a response in your gold test, I'll run it past you again. Either there's no gold, not very much gold, or too diluted a solution. Um, just evaporate it down until it's a lot thicker, more of a concentrated solution. And if there's gold, it'll give you a better response. Now what I've done so far, I definitely did get the gold off. There's no, no doubt about it, 100% every board was clean when I threw them in the bin. I saw the gold being sprayed off the boards. I saw the gold flying around in the, container, in the beaker. And therefore it was all in there and I definitely dissolved the gold that was in there. So there's no way the, the, the um, process I used has missed any gold. It's just that you need so much computer scrap to get anywhere. Now I demonstrated before with another solution I've got going, my own personal batch, how I cook things in nitric bath. I do the pins, the boards, everything. This is a new batch. The last batch I drained all the nitric acid out of it and threw that into my acrorigia. I topped up the acrorigia with some more hydrochloric acid and a little bit more nitric and then I started another batch and I just keep doing that over and over and over you see all the sediment on top bits and pieces of board plugs and all kinds of things but we don't normally do that on video because it's too hard for you guys to understand we like to just single everything out do one type of thing at a time to make it easier for the beginners once you know what you're doing, you just throw everything that can be used in a nitric bath into a one beaker, like I'm doing here, you can see the gold, nice bits of gold there, and you can see the gold flying around in there, and the sediment down the bottom, and I'm just cooking it until there's no reaction, I'll add to it over time. And when there's a lot in there, last time I had at least that thick of sediment of all the solution, the boards, plugs, bits of plastic, and then I tipped it all into my acrorigia after I drained all the nitric acid off. The nitric acid, if there's any spare nitric in there, it doesn't go to waste. That can be used for silver or other nitric baths like this. So the nitric acid solution that I had in there was returned to this beaker and a new batch of things were put in there. I keep using the same solution, I just top it up with more nitric as I use more and more things. I drain it, put all the solution, all the pulp I should say, into my acrorigia, return the solution back to the beaker and go again. And I really pile it up, you have to, you need a lot, and I can't even emphasize it enough, you need a lot of computer scrap. Anybody who thinks, oh this is going to be rich, I'm going to get so much money out of this, well, if you're patient, and if you've got a lot of computer scrap, because it will take time to process so much. Um, if you're in a hurry for it and you try and drop a small amount, you're going to be faced with the same dilemma here where you think there's a lot of gold in solution, but there's really not. You can see you've got this gold in there by the colour of the solution. But, there's not much in there. Those few boards I did, okay, it wasn't a few, it was a kilo or so, but that's what I mean, you need a lot more than a kilo of boards, you need loads and loads and loads of boards. So, anyway, I'll see what I can get out of it. I'm expecting a light dusting on the bottom of the beaker, a light, a very, very light dusting, if anything. See, the solution on the test is just starting to go dark. I mean, this is really, really weak. I've had weak solutions before, but this is the weakest I've seen. I'm going to actually boil this down a little bit, make it more concentrated, and test it again because that's super, super weak. I haven't had one like that before. But I know the gold's in there, 
I know I haven't lost it. We just need a lot more than what we had. I want to clarify for the beginners that are watching this. Please don't, don't try and go to that level yet. You'll get yourself all confused and won't know what you're doing. It's just... Uh, damn birds. It's so much easier to stick with one thing. Just use lots of it. Don't just do small amounts of something. Do lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. But just do one type of thing until you get experienced and then you can go adding all kinds of things to the solution. I don't want to see people trying to do that when they're real, real beginners. You're going to get yourself all muddled up. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you guys what a concentrated solution should be like. So this has definitely got a lot of gold in it. Um, this one's fairly clean. I'll put the solution in here. I have a little jar down here, a little beaker down here with a bit of water in it. What I do is I rinse off my pipette, suck some water up into it, squirt it out. Now this, this solution in there now has gold bearing solution in there and that will be returned to my, my pot there. And over time, not now, I mean I, I have that there for weeks and weeks and weeks and then one day I'll add it to a solution and put fresh water in. So anyway, back to this. So you can see this solution is just starting to go like an orangey colour, pale, even that, barely, barely responding. This is the dilute, so, uh, this is the concentrated solution. You watch how quick it reacts. Jet black, straight away. That's what a good positive solution should look like. Just so you guys know, and to show you that my actual Stannis chloride does work and to prove to you guys that there's near nothing in there when there's a lot in there I can see it from here it's just ever so slightly going dark I don't know if you guys can see the difference from what it used to be or not it's a very 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 poor response I'd be surprised <coughs> excuse me I'll be surprised if we get anything at all out of that. So anyway, I'll carry on. So I've just poured the last of the solution along with any of the excess sulfonic acid that was in the beaker into the filter. It's coming through nicely. Apart from when I just put that bit of sulfonic in, it must have slipped past the edge of the filter, which is annoying. But I'm going to evaporate this down anyway and then filter it one more time, ready to drop the gold. So the idea of keeping all the ex excess sulfonic acid in the filter is the next time I've got a gold solution that might need def uh, denoxing, I'll put this in there and the, the excess sulfonic can go to work. I don't waste anything in my videos. So it is a shame that that's gone through. It would have only gone through one of those loops. Anyway, that's what it is. So that means I need to filter it one more time. We'll do that soon. Once all this is finished, I'll put it on heat and evaporate it down. Okay, so I put the filter with the, S, with the sulfamic in there. I picked it up by one side and some more S, uh, sulfamic found, found its way into the solutions. And now it's definitely needing another filter. That's all right. I'm going to evaporate it now. So I've got it on high heat. I don't want to boil it because if you boil it, it spitters and spatters and you have gold solution leaving your beaker. But I just want to, uh, I might even turn it down a little bit. I just want to, vapors coming off the top. Steam. I don't want any solution splattering. And I'm going to try and reduce it down by half at least. The purpose is to do another test and see if it looks any stronger. Uh, I doubt it will because I, I really don't think there's much gold in there. Not with the amount of boards we did. But hopefully it will show you guys that when you, when you make a more concentrated solution, it gives you a better test. And 
If I was putting SMB powder in, I wouldn't need to do evaporate it because you're supposed to uh, dilute your solution anyway by double. You're supposed to double the quantity of your solution with water. However, the way I do my solutions is I either dissolve my SMB into water, which means I'm adding water when I drop it, or I use copper as, which is a liquid. So I don't need such a diluted solution. It's actually better for me to evaporate it down and then add my solutions to drop the gold. Otherwise it's too diluted. And it you, you can be hard to get if you've got a really, really, really weak diluted solution. So anyway, I'll let that sit for a while and evaporate. And uh, once it gets to a certain point, it's night time now here. Once it gets to the point that I want, I'll just turn it off and leave it overnight. And we'll come back to it tomorrow. As you can see, I reduced it down quite a bit from what it was. And now uh, I did a gold test and it still barely showed anything. So I'm really not thinking there's any much gold in there at all. I got copper out here. And I'm going to pour the same quantity of what's in there. And we'll see what happens. I know for a fact that even though there was all those boards, there's not much gold. But we'll see. Well, viewers, I have a bit of a challenge ahead of me. I can't see any gold in there. It looks like there might be a dusting. There's a little bit in there. A little bit of something. And I can't siphon it because of the colour. I don't know where I'm going to stop. And I don't want to pour it out because it's going to be all for, it's going to be all uh, like you can see some floating on top. I'll spritz that and see if it comes down and uh, I'll see if I can get some spray it might help Duh. better so what I've decided to do what I think would be the better option is I'm going to fill this beaker right up to the top with water which will heavily dilute that solution and it should be a lot lighter and then I'll be able to see the gold because I don't want to miss any I want to get an accurate response and I still am really really sorry for giving you false information on the last video that I did I told you about where I measured it wrong so I'm going to do everything I can in this one to be as accurate as possible so yeah I'm going to Fill this up, hopefully make it nice and light and be able to see the gold. Let it settle, see what's there. Well, diluting the solution has helped. You can see the gold at the bottom. So now I'm going to pour this off. And for those who haven't seen my other videos, I have a large flask here. And I always pour off my gold drop water and gold wash water etc into that bar, uh, flask because what happens is tiny 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 little bits of gold and bits of fine dust that you can't see eventually travels over um, and over time over a couple of days or whatever settles in the bottom of the flask so in case this gold stirs up and little bits of it escape I'll end up catching it in the flask. Now I'm going to need two hands for this so I'll do, I'll go and do that now. There's the first of three boiling hot water washers. I know on other channels they say just use a little bit of water. I like to use a lot. What's a bit of water cost? Nothing. I'd rather know that I'm really washing that gold. A tiny bit of water might not do it. I always use a lot of water and I get good results at least on the first three washes anyway so that's the first of one two and three that's the first of three 
Then we're going to go on another thing. So I'll let that settle. Once the gold has settled, it should be clear liquid. I'll pour it off, do another one, and so on. Alright, so I'll let that settle for now. Well, as you can see, the gold has settled nicely. So now I'll pour this water off. And again, I keep the, the water into the uh, flask. You always want to pour your water washers off into a flask or a beaker or a bucket or something because little bits of gold will travel across. So I'll do that now and the kettle's on and I'll put some more hot water in. Time for water wash number two. If you guys don't want to do big water washes, that's entirely up to you, but it is imperative that you do do three water washes. So I'll come back when this is settled to do number three. Well that's settled nicely, so I'll pour this off and do the third water wash. Now I could already see when I was doing that that it's more granulated than, than, than it was dust. Now I know that there's a lot of people who are going to say, oh you've shown this in every video. What I need to do, so try and understand please, is um, I have to assume that there's people watching this video for the first time that might not have seen my other videos. Uh, so, you know, I can't just go, oh, well, you know how to do it, because some people might not. There might be some beginners out there who don't know. So anyway, now I'll let that settle, and we'll come back. Now it's the last of the first three water washes. Now I need to pour that out and I'm going to boil it now with hydrochloric acid and this is important and I don't just rinse it with hydrochloric acid, I want to boil it. Helps to cook out all the other things like copper and bits and pieces that are in there. Okay, I put hydrochloric acid in there. Now I'm just going to let it boil and I'm going to boil it for about an hour at least. And then I'll tip it out, we'll go from there. Okay, now the boil's finished. Let it cool down. Till pour it out. I save my HCL, so I'll put that in the bottom. And then three, three more water washers. Um, when I tipped out the hydrochloric acid and put some water in there, I thought the film was recording, but it wasn't. But as you can see, there's not much gold. There's a little bit, but there's not, not much. Not as much as you would expect from all those boards. Hence why I said you need so much computer scrap to get anywhere. But anyway, I'll drain this off and I'll put two more water washes. Alright, this will be the second water wash. And I noticed after using the hydrochloric acid that it granulates a lot more now, it's not so powdery. So this will take hardly this will take hardly any time at all to settle. Whereas when it was a dust, it took a while. You can see the colours even different. It's brown now, which it should be, instead of black mud. It's a, a nice brown chocolate brown powder. That's how it should be. So it's almost settled already. So we'll give that a few minutes. I don't need to do a big wash. Because it's already been through the hydrochloric acid and everything. All I'm doing now is rinsing off all the hydrochloric acid. We'll give that a few minutes and I'll put the third wash in. Well that's been less than five minutes. Probably two or three minutes and it's already settled. So I'll pour that off now and then I'll do the third one. So if you look at it now you can see that it's all granulated which is good so I put the third and final water wash in and I give it a good swirl around make sure it's really really getting rinsed off and let that settle and then it's time to dry it and see what we've got I uh, picked up this new dish the other day, the cooling wear dish so it should be able to take the heat and this is going to be a perfect little jug for drawing gold I think 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour off the last bit of water now. That's the final water wash. You can see the colour is nice chocolate brown. And I'll get that gold into here and put it on a low heat and dry it out. Okay, all the gold's out of the beaker. It's into here. I was going to try and pipe it some of the water out, but I think I don't think I don't think I'll worry about that. Just make sure that it's all down off the sides. And uh, I'll just put it on a low heat and let it dry. And I'll come back when it's time to weigh up. Okay guys, the gold is dry. Um, but here's the thing, right? Every time I've tried to dry gold, it always seems to get stuck to the bottom of whatever type of container I dry it in. Um, so, I'll show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> You can see that it's been well and truly dried and it's all stuck to the bottom. I've tried scraping it out and it's just you know, impossible. This is what happens every single time. And I watched a video the other day with uh, who I refer to as the eBay refiner. Um, some of you know who that is. And after drawing the gold in, in, in a, in a um, corningware dish, he was able to slide it round and nothing was stuck to the dish. I'm a little bit skeptical about that. It's almost as though he just poured some powder into a dish and then conveniently it was able to move around. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is. It's, I'm not going to go into that. Um, so I've done the best I can to scrape it up, get it into a pile. Uh, you can see I didn't succeed too well. Uh, I've got my little dish here. I'm going to do it properly this time. I'm going to make sure that's cleaned out because it's got some gold dust in there from before. Um, I need two hands for this, so just let me get set up for a second. Okay, so I've got the dish cleaned out. I've got it teared. So there's no weight on it. Now I'm going to try and, I need two hands again, but I'm going to try and get this into the dish. So one second. Okay, I've done what I can. Obviously there's still a lot in there. Uh, even as it came up the side, it started clinging to the, to the dish. And this is what I've got. 0 0.01 of, an ounce, of a, a, a gram. Actually, that's I was T, was it? I'm not T4, hang on. Graham. Point three. I'm not really sure what my next video is going to be. I've got some things to process, but I just haven't really lined anything up as yet. Uh, I can give you a rundown of what I've got collecting. A viewer has asked me to do these, so I'm getting a bit of a collection together for these. I've got some gold fingers, these are Eneg, so these need to be processed a bit differently to the other gold, so I'm getting a bit of a collection, there's about half a kilo there, I'll wait till I've got a lot more, um, I'm just busy scrapping, I've got my brass and my copper and bits and pieces, some bright wire, so uh, yeah, um, can't think of anything else to say. So I hope you guys liked it. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please tune in. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do. Yeah, that's what I wanted to mention. Geez, I've had a good time getting subscribers. Um, I, I've had a, well, at least one a day for the last few weeks and it's been really, really good. Um, I spoke to the people who I go to for getting my prospecting equipment from, the shop that I go to, um, asked them if I can do a video on their store, and they're more than happy for that. Um, this is a bit of a sneak peek, uh, but basically they're going to let me do a video in about a, a month's time, because the guy's busy up till then, and he's going to put together a package uh, up to probably around about a hundred dollars worth of things to give away Pretty excited about that. I don't really know what that could be um, 
probably probably things like scoops and snuffer bottles and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, we're going to have a giveaway with about a hundred dollars worth of stuff, and uh, that's going to be really good. So keep tuned for that. But the thing is, I need more subscribers. Um, I want to make sure that there's a lot of people who have access to that, not just a few. So until then, uh, thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Bye. Uh, good day, viewers. While I was editing the program, the, the video, I noticed that some of the uh, clips had flipped and I had to watch it like this. <laughs> so I'm guessing you guys have probably got a stiff neck as well. Um, I apologize for that. I've got a new laptop and I haven't got the same program anymore. I had to get a new program and I can't see anywhere in this program where I can rotate left or right. I used to be able to do that with my other program. It's going to take me a little while to get to know this program. Uh, you may see a few errors in, in, in my videos until I get used to it. So uh, I'll walk around this way now for the rest of the day to try and even it up. <laughs> so uh, I, all I can say is I'm sorry. Yeah, if, if it was annoying to you guys, I'll get onto it and I'll improve. So, all right, enjoy.